In this video, I'm sharing three things I learned from the book The Motive by Patrick Lencioni. This is a book that explains two different motives that a leader may have for becoming the CEO of an organization and the cascading effect of either of those two intentions. So the first thing I learned really was exactly that. The, organ the, health on, the impact on organizational health of the two different motives. So the first motive that he outlines is the wrong one, which is that people ascend the ladder of leadership as a reward. So they see their moving up or them taking a role as a CEO or a lead manager, or whatever the case may be, as the reward or the prize for all of the hard work that they've put in. And so when that person becomes a leader, they act in a certain way. So for example, they don't like to do the things that they don't want to do. So now that I'm the leader, if I don't like meetings, I'm not going to hold meetings. If I, my interests align with marketing, I'm going to go full force in marketing and delegate the rest out. The problem with this is that he says the role of the chief executive, which he says the chief executing officer, as he renames it, is that the primary role of that job is managing and leading people. So coaching them, holding them accountable, helping them navigate different issues. And so that requires doing a lot of other work that the CEO might not want to do. So when they come in with the wrong motive, when they come in seeing it as a reward, they're going to be less likely to do the things that they're supposed to be doing. And so things like, I don't like meetings. I think they're boring, so I'm not gonna have them. On the other hand, there's the CEO that sees leadership as a responsibility. And so they come in as the servant leader. And one thing that Lynchoni says in the book is that we need to do away with the term servant leader because all of good leadership is actually servant leadership. And so when that person comes in, they see their role as a responsibility of helping other people. The second thing I learned is where a leader is held accountable. So Lynchoni gives the example that a an athlete is held accountable by their performance on the field. A surgeon is judged by their performance, for example, in the operating room. A leader is held accountable or, or judged by their performance in meetings and the outcome of those meetings, which is the decisions that they make. That's the primary role and responsibility of a leader. Now, one thing that happens in kind of the trap that people fall into, when a leader doesn't want to have meetings or they see that now that I'm the leader, I can choose not to do these things, they're not having the right amount of communication and a healthy decision-making process. And the thing that they hide behind, and to me this was really interesting, was they hide behind labeling all these things as micromanagement. Well, I don't want to be a micromanager, so I have smart people around me, and I delegate to them, and I don't have to worry about it. They're, they're grown-ups, they can do their job. And on the flip side, people that don't want to be held accountable, they'll say, I don't want to be micromanaged, I don't want someone checking in on me constantly, and so on. And that starts the breakdown of accountability and culture, and it cascades its way down the organization. But instead, what a leader is supposed to be doing, according to Lencioni, is providing guidance and coaching, providing a sense of accountability to their leaders. And he says that doesn't show a lack of trust. What it does show that the leader is there to provide the benefit of guidance and coaching and helping people to maximize their potential. So even the best, even the most competent, they still need some of that direction and coaching. And that's the primary responsibility of the leader. And that's where they should be focusing their time. And if they're not focusing their time on that, then actually it's a sign of them coming in with the wrong motive. One other thing that he mentioned was, a lot of times leaders will try to avoid difficult conversations. And so they'll shy away from it. Politics will continue to fester within the organization because the leader doesn't like having those uncomfortable conversations or they don't wanna make someone feel bad. And he said that actually this is an act of selfishness because when a leader is avoiding those difficult conversations, they're doing it because they themselves don't wanna feel uncomfortable. And in turn, the consequence of that is that the bad type of behavior will continue. So the leader with the responsibility mindset will tackle those things head on. The third thing that I learned was, and this really is more of a warning, which is that when someone does come in with the right intentions, they come in with the right motive, there's still a trap that they can fall into. Because when they come in with the right motive and they're coaching people and they're helping people and they're serving people, 
people will end up praising them quite a bit and they'll say, oh, this person is so humble, this person is so responsible, I love working for this person and so on and so on and so on. And it becomes easy to drink your own Kool-Aid. And so Lencioni says that it's vital that as people ascend the leadership ladder, as they take on more responsibility, especially when they're doing it and with that sense of responsibility, that they have a strong inner circle that can help to call them out on behavior or hold them accountable as well. So that's three things I learned from this book. I highly recommend it. You can read it in a short sitting. Um, one question that I have that I'd like to hear your thoughts on. So Lencioni outlines the two motives. One person that comes in with a sense of responsibility and one person that comes in with a sense of this is my prize and my reward. My question is, how do we tackle the structures uh, or the setup in different companies that incentivize you to seek that reward? Because a lot of times people are seeking that leadership as the reward because that's how the incentive structure is aligned. So how would you suggest that we tackle that? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend so we can get this out to more people. All right, see you in the next one.